Hello there, everyone, and thank you for joining me here in Equestrian War. I'm your host, Mr. Chirrup, Terror Lover, but the fate of a traitor. Choosing a method of execution was hardly Auburn Leaves' area of expertise, but unfortunately her other skills simply weren't needed in this particular case. She was responsible for handling the Tobuckian warlords, and thus Walnut Drive fell under her jurisdiction, even so. There could be no saving an apostate and traitor such as him. It was compromising to chair up Terra in every conceivable way, whilst deliberating. Her father entered the study and inspected the litany of papers on her desk over her shoulder. Well, so they finally caught him. No easy feat us here. The legionnaires, the captain, reported that he was mere minutes away from escaping again by sea. She returned, leaning back in the comfortable office chair. Lawn was someone infamous among the upper echelons for surviving his initial flight from the homeland, and subsequent anti chair up Terra efforts in Tobuk. Needless to say, Autumn Breeze seemed mighty pleased that they had finally cut a troublesome traitor who marred their otherwise spotless record of state security. So long as he's incompetent, who's now, I doubt he'll cause trouble again. Have you decided yet? He just asked, knowing all about the specifics of the apostate fate already. She frowned for once, a little indecisive. I think it'd be best to have him hanged. Have him brought before a firing squad and shot. Have him hanged. At the gallows. Zakon was 22 years old, and by the time the stallion probably seemed more hangings than most ponies had in a lifetime. Not that he had much choice in the matter. Garrison duty in Tolbuck was a bore, and the auxiliary unit he had been in assigned to cart away the bodies once the rope had done its work. And by the nightmare, there were a lot of bodies to dispose of, local rubble and bandits mostly. Still, today was different. Zakon could feel it as he watched a new prisoner being escorted into the courtyard and up the wooden steps of the gallows. He turned to the sergeant. Hey, Sergeant, who's that? The mayor lifted her eyes from her cards and went for a moment, scowling a deserter. Walnut Drive, that's his name. Heard he abandoned his legion some years ago to come here in Tobuk, of all places. Probably thought he could have some sort of vengeance, apostate and traitor that he is. Zakon let us off whistle. A legionnaire deserter? He never heard of such a thing before. The stallion, his ooze, and wings bound. Climbed carefully up the wooden steps, possessing some remnant of strength despite his stay in a cell. There was something fierce to his face. Zakon could tell. At this point, most would either start crying, begging, or raging against their captors. Walnut did nothing of the sort. His face a mask of calm over what must have been a solemn acceptance as the rope was placed around his neck, followed by a big black bag over his head. An officer by his side pulled out a piece of paper beginning to read that sentence, and the Zakon decided he'd seen enough. He already knew how it was going to end anyways. You up for a game, Sergeant called? He almost missed the noise of the trapdoor swinging open. The royal warlords of the dead have been captured by our forces, now that all the madness has decided what to do with them. While there have been talks of simply executing a lot of them, the legionary council has, decided, has meant to decide their fate. The debate is expected to take several takes and require many interrogations by the nightmare of the mistress, so we shall follow her footsteps. For example, the exile of the princess. Or in south, princess, prince. Autumn Burr, uh, Auburn leaves had hardly finished her last set of notes when she asked her next question, and if I may take a shot in the dark, do you intend to use Tobuk as a springboard to claim your birthright in Warzena? She can see the stallion becoming more irritated as she pried into what must have been a touchy subject. Luckily for Barag Baragzim, she wasn't here to give him therapy, and luckily for her, he was being very cooperative in the interrogation. She would have considered him rather brave given his calmness if it wasn't for the fact that he was already un clearly unaware of the danger he was currently in, after all. She could decide to have him shot. That's correct, madam. I apologize if my efforts to achieve that goal inadvertently put me at odds with the regime. You imagine her response. Still calm in spite of his convictions. As she finalized one page's worth of notebook scribbles and turned to the next page, a thought crossed her mind. He was trying this hard for a reason, wasn't he? He really thought, or at least hoped, that they would release him so that he could run off and cause trouble with whatever remained of the fortune he apparently smuggled out of Warzena. She put her pen down, clasped her hooves together, and leaned back. If we could promise you such a thing ourselves, would you be willing to cooperate with us? The question got the response she was looking for, and wasn't surprised, even though he didn't seem intelligent enough to realize there was likely to catch. As he was uh, wide eyes returned to her, was he nodded? I would. It wasn't entirely useless, the fate of the prince. Also, we're trying to build some, um, well, we looked to build stuff here, but apparently we can't. Oh, God, yeah. We're developing a lot of projects here, so it is normal. Okay, to the prince. Autumn Breeze scoured the notes that his daughter presented. Uh, fascinating. Not the individual, of course. He seems to be something between an imbecile and a child, but this whole part here is certainly something. Oh, why, thank you, she gave, all beaming all the while. He was reportedly a semi-competent general, so he should be able to cause some trouble at least, though how effective he can really be in Rosena remains to be seen, of course. Uh, let's close out of that stuff. Uh... It might be best, or better not, to invest any resources into this little project, lest it become more trouble than it's worth, the mayor admitted, cocking her head as her father read that over the notes again. Auburn certainly had a point there. Warlords were only proficient under certain circumstances, and making the assumption that this Baragzen fellow would be loyal, let alone competent, would be a considerable gamble, all the same. Leopardus zebras that soak up fire and casualties so that the legionnaires don't have to is an appealing prospect. Even idiots could be useful as long as you gave them simple directions and a good enough justification. She chuckled lightly and turned to trot into the kitchen. Tea, whilst you think? Mm, yes, please. I believe this is a proposition that requires a beverage to mull over. He returned with similar nonchalance. By the time the kettle boiled and the tea was ready, the old stallion was sitting down on the, cap on the settee with his mind made up. The mayor carefully placed the cup of the cup on a small central table and took a seat herself as her father made it speak up. Perhaps it would be best to simply dispose of him. We should just leave him in a cell. Let's make him per the preparations for the idea of yours, hmm? Uh, Baragzin joins Chiraptera. Where's Baragzin? 
Huh. These guys over here, but no. Two twelve with Warzen and Liberation Divisions. Oh. Okay. Well, we're supremacists here. And I'm a supremacist, right? I don't know. We'll see. Now, what would the vanquish? We do want to raid some more, but we do need you know, some actual stuff here. Uh, decisions, labor leasing. I did read this one last time, so if you're going to read this game, please go ahead. But the Severian Expats. And so with my family forced in Exxon Equestria, I only saw one way to make a real difference. Leave and go abroad and make some money doing the only thing I knew how to do, and then send the bits back to my relatives in hopes of starting a counter-revolution in Severiana. To restore what was lost. To my knowledge, nothing. has happened in spite of the funds I provided, and the majority of my immediate family have passed away in my absence. Save my brother Maxime and my aunt Karina. Though this was supposed to be interrogation, Autumnburn Leaves was nothing short of enthralled by the tale told by Alessia Snizyanya. Her family history of nightmares worship afforded her some luxuries with regard to her treatment as a prisoner, admittedly. A little bias from a warden who had been here for several hours now. The Thestral hummed to himself, if I may, how much did you send? Just over two million bits in raw funds, last I checked, and that whatever historical artifacts I could get my hooves on since I assumed that they would sell at home. I had to really work for some of those, she admitted with a slight chuckle. Despite being a captee, the exile was incredibly reasonable. Unfortunately, that didn't take away from the fact that she had seemingly avoided discussing the matter of faith, which was the main reason why Auburn was still here. She, he, she needed to know if Alicia could be allowed to a position in the armed forces or if measures needed to be taken to ensure loyalty, but had received no concrete answer. Once the shock of the amount of money that the mayor had willingly given away subsided, she excused herself for the day. Perhaps her father would have something to say. A fascinating quality, truly, of the fate of the expat. As it happened, his first reaction was to laugh haughtily. A fairly uncommon display for an autumn breeze, as emotions went, his daughter well, rolled her eyes and allowed herself to flop under the settee. Having spent the rest of the day on the paperwork and now being completely exhausted, I failed to see what's so entertaining about this, Autumn managed after a long sigh. Her father clutched a hoof to his stomach and guffed for a good half minute before he managed to get away any words out of his mouth. Ha ha, oh goodness. That's marvelous, that is. She managed to keep you occupied for three hours without divulging her personal thoughts on the faith? If I didn't know you any better, I would have said that you avoided the subject yourself. Look at what you've done to your old stallion. She let through a grin, having only seen him like this a few times in recent years. Well, yes. She's a smart mare, smart enough to prove her own intellect by simply holding a conversation interesting enough to captivate me. Auburn admitted, and fortunately, that still leaves us with the question of what to do with her, an issue only exacerbated by her success in this case. The pair looked at one another, silently communicating their thoughts. He could tell that she wanted to give him her a chance, and she could tell that he considered her a threat to internal security, in spite of his admiration for her apparent charisma. In the end, it was up to Auburn to make a verdict. We need to be re-educated in spite of my second hoof of fondness? Can, com can compromise on house arrest. She was clearly tempted to let her be and welcome her in. Now. Nah. Less than one political power a day. I want to get Octopus Phase 3 of 3. Ooh. We'll flood with opium. North Free Communes. Oh. Free Northern. Okay. Well, as much as I want to do that, I don't see the point of doing that one there, so... Ten days left, I'll get some more facilities back, which would be good. Um, yeah. Woe to the vanquished. Labor leasing. What are the natives? With the greater swaths of Zarantian land now under our control, our legions have encountered more and more of their locals, the natives of the Great Unwashed. And those reports indicate that they not yet dared to interfere with the might of our legions, however. We now face a crossroads of choice in how we deal with the locals. A report has been delivered to the Legionary Council suggesting a potentially viable course of action. General standing orders indicate that the locals should be pacified forcibly in preparation for the distribution to various services as labor and test subjects. However, the report suggests a more relaxed approach, and goes as far as suggesting we might endear ourselves and the goddess to the locals by treating them with a softer hoof, perhaps by even giving them some token recognition. Sparing the rod is an example, while it's not a practice we've yet made much use of, it may, however, serve as a useful experiment, a sign of mercy. No legal protection. More bullets than they have creatures to spare. C'est la vie. I love political power. Because we still have Autumn Breeze for now, so I mean, he's fine. I just won't lose any peepee. -pee. I did say I want this guy too, so let's get some of the air, air XP too. Military industrial complex. The industry required to sustain a massive military buildup only can be met by greater government subsidies. To keep our military uh, top of the line, we'll embrace this wedding of assets against the critics who warn of tying our commercial sector to even more of the military. The contracts we give through will diversify the research opportunities before us. War is a racket. When our forces breach Tobolk's last line of defense, sending the mercenary rebel rabble into a full-on rout, they're surprised to find a large warehouse filled to the brim with weapons and ammo. Our legionnaires worked quickly to scare them, preventing those vast arsenals from falling into civilian hooves, as the mercenaries themselves showed little interest about keeping on defending the city. 
Even more surprising, however, was the presence of weapon workshops and other manufacturing facilities, which were too left unattended. Apparently, Tobuk was once a substantial supplies depot or deposit for the Storm King's army during the rampage across North Zebrica, and following his defeat, the mercenaries in the cities inherited the empty or still present uh, infrastructure. With some superficial repairs, these old weapon factories can be recalibrated to aid in warfare. At least Tobuk had something going for it, so we'll do that one. I read these two last time too. A Thousand Year Struggle. Yes. It's taking some time and effort to remind our people of our duty. One cannot blame them for losing faith, for they struggle for a thousand years to preparing for the triumph. As one generation passes on to the next, we regale a flame of patriotism within them all. The first great steps on another thousand year struggle have been made, and they all take pride in being in the forefront. The Desert Kingdom. Lightning Charm was frowning, by which itself was not a surprise, and was used universally regarded as a bad sign. She tapped her hoof a couple times on the desk thoughtfully, and disproved this, she finally said. You're asking me to entrust a novice with the authority to rule a wild land that has only been recently conquered. Our forces still have trouble dealing with these nomadic tribes, and you want me to entrust your nephew with this? Eternal Clip shrugged. I've taught Lucian everything I know. I wouldn't be proposing him for such an assignment if I wasn't sure of his capabilities. Besides, he possesses something that many of us simply lack. Is that so? Pray tell them. What is this incredible skill that an entire room of skilled and experienced legionnaires do not possess? Eclipse chuckled for a moment, evidently finding some amusement in that. He knows when to embrace ideas that may appear unorthodox at first glance, and in that regard, he does share the similarity with you. However, a task will also be a good introduction into a proper role of command. I don't have intention to hold my title forever, and I will eventually need a successor at the head of the Ursa Legion. Lightning charms displeasure or displeased frowned in our debate, but rather continued to increase. To regret it, however, she knew how to recognize a sound argument when it was presented to her. Let's see what the pup can do. Thousand Year Struggle. Um, New C Initiative. Ooh, this one's pretty good too. Form the Youth Corps, Service Corps. The Nightmare does not need to inspire the loyalty of the faithful, for they already are an embrace. She must enkindle the love of foals and ensure that the future is in her name. The establishment of the Youth Service Corps will lead to a betterment of her young ponies and inspire future generations of loyal, dependable, and honest Cherub Terrans. New Settlement Initiative. As we expand our territory east, we must also consider the uncultivated land already within our territory. With increased automation and infrastructure, it's feasible to settle to even the most desolate parts of Chirap Terra. This new initiative will encourage our people to settle in these new townships and enjoy the comforts of modernity there. And then reorganize the eastern territories. With all the warlords dealt with and the resistance crushed and the civilians pacified, we've dealt with none of the de petty despots other natives could secured Tobuk. Now that our invasion is over, we must no longer be conquerors, but rather protectors. Tobuk is our territory now, it's a territory of Nightmare Moon, and a valued part of our empire. We will not let it fall into disarray again. So at least we have to garrison this area for now. Omalaz Atagan. Open the political sphere. Generic focus tree. Yeah, that's okay. Oops. It's so gonna be up there, huh? Do that. And what do we have? Do we have tw only 12 still, huh? We need more civvies. I'm going to go with civvies. Light industry, thank you. God, we need more laborers. Flood the kingdom of Orzana with a. Oh! BM. Very okay, nice. Definitely more pony power, though. Um, You guys. You already have military police, so we're already using you. So getting it, that would just be better for us overall, anyway, so. Additionally, do we have you? Yes, we do. Help put down resistance here, too. So we're keep working, get in, and get more compliance. Great. You have that. You also have it, too, which is good. Good, good. Nice. Eastern territories. Luxuries for the masses, huh? Additional labor procurement. Cast a die. We can go to war with them if we wanted to, but we're going to go this one next. Expand the coal mines. More steel. Do we need more steel right now, though? No, we're pretty good, so we can wait. Um... Oh, is it down there now? Saddle Arabia. Nice. Uh, cast a die eventually as well. Do all this stuff. Mining mechanizations. Not bad. Colossus is nice. Coal liquefaction. That's not bad either. Ursa Carbine 1010. Yes, please. A little out of time. Um, artillery wise. Yeah, I get some better artillery. 
and yes. I do have forts there, so. Additional labor procurement raids are violent and prone to failure, but they are not the only way to procure laborers. Our agents will be in operations to direct refugee ships towards their waters and even find those desperate enough to volunteer for new life in the mythical Sharp Terran for the Nightmare. Emerald Light Progress Report Project Octopus the Third. After a dozen failed tests on hippogriffs, miserable experiments on laborers, and an ungodly amount of dissected cephalopods, Project o Octopus has succeeded. In a violation of lab protocols and under the stress of continued failure, the researcher's team stored several test subjects and amp samples improperly out of cold storage. While many of the test subjects in the storage expired after testing acted as a control group, those stored improperly all displayed differing levels of success rather than any trait carried by a species in its DNA that made its regenerative process special as we incorrectly theorized with hippogriffs. It was discovered that a rare bacteria aided in rapid healing. The bacteria act similar to healing magic by boosting the speed of the natural healing process, while our soldiers will not be regenerating limbs or preventing excess scarring. When mixed with crystal extract and other chemicals, the rapid stimulation injection pack can close almost all wounds. These stim packs, as the team has called them, have been put to use on several labors and varying levels of injury. All but the most grievously wounded were able to be stabilized. The only clear downside of these stim packs is the degradation of the natural healing ability, but one would have to use hundreds in rapid succession to do any permanent harm. Stim pack? Not a bad name. That's awesome, actually. As right now, we're casting the die. We'll see if we can go to war and kill these guys off, but we'll see. Um, subject. Uh, until the progress are defeated. Uh, that'd be kind of nice, but oh well. Operation Spit Roast. That'd be cool, but whatever. And we'll still do these here as well. Um, but, you know, whatever. Freedom through service. Gar service guarantees citizenship. <laughs> Arbeit mach frei. Laborers of cheer up terror rejoice. All who serve for the committed time in the legions of a nightmare moon will be granted the freedom at the end of their term. Those who are wounded or medically discharged will with honors will be placed on auxiliary battalions but are still eligible. Are you doing your part for a better future? Also right now, so we're going to go to war. Um, you guys are just going to hold the line here. Like, these guys are going to suffer and not be able to hold the line very well. But that's why we're going to use a Pegasi and hopefully just blitz through here and then blitz through here and circle and destroy these divisions. So that's a goal. Are we going to be actually be able to achieve that? Probably not, but we'll see. Do we have any anti-tank? We don't. I guess. Oh, we have hydro companies here, though. Weird. This this group is definitely not going to do very well over here. Uh, throw in another infantry division. We might make them 40 combo with eventually, but we'll see. That's uh, not a hydro company. I would like to throw hydro companies on, though. Really would like to. In the meantime, we'll get all that stuff. Get some more defense. You guys are just going to hold. Hold, 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 hold. Uh, you guys are there too. Cool. We're no longer importing stuff, which is fine. Uh, we might actually want to import some rubber, though. Yes, please. At least get one and one. So, yeah, that's a goal. Just blitz through here as fast as we possibly can. Great war. Nice. Alright, so they went to war with us too, which kind of sucks, but whatever. So you guys got a blitz, 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 blitz. Hopefully we're not doing this too early where we can't do this very well. Uh, yeah, I'm just very concerned on this side because they are going to die, 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 die. Um, let's wait for that one. It's by promoted, which is fine. In all honesty, we make this stuff over here, right? So you guys, if, if anything, why don't you guys maybe actually just defend this way? Shorts up the lines a little bit more. And we should be able to do okay. Uh, oh, God, no. Their navy is quite good. But we do have some naval bombers here, which is good. Over here, do that. Do this, do that. So if you guys could hurry up, that'd be great. Just go in there. That'd capitulate them faster. Zamash would be good to get. Just going to retreat. New main hand explosion. There, there it is. Nice. Oh, we have some columns to go through as well, which I forgot about maybe, but whatever. Um, so, hey, Warzone is gone. Good. Go, 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 go. So now we can do a full front line. Now we can do this. Well, something like that. Go in if you can. You guys do the best you can. Um, Pegasi here should do okay-ish. Oh god, five divisions there? Jesus Christ. Well, how's air doing? We're actually doing very well on air for now. Mm, infantry special. So that's exactly what we wanted. We don't have a ton of manpower, but still. Um... 
Yeah, they have a crap ton of divisions. How do they have so many divisions? I don't understand. How? Maybe it's because we waited too long, maybe? That might be it. So if this doesn't go well, we'll use Khan's commands. Oh, or at least I'll go back and replay this maybe a little bit. So we'll see. Yeah, I'm sorry, but we have air superiority here with Cass. We should have Cass here, right? Fighters, yeah. We have about 16,000, 54,000. They should be out of manpower by now. Yeah, I mean, seriously? That's so stupid. Uh, you guys do this here. Oh, god dang it. Yeah, I'm going to have to redo this a little bit off screen just because I we're not ready for this. We're definitely not ready for this. So, um, we'll come back here in just a little bit. We'll do this one. Expand the Hoof's operations. The Hoof of the Nightmare must grow as we have. While our traditional intelligence agency has been with us since our first landings, there have been a few innovations in the conduct of operations on domestic soil. While they're made on the bleeding edge of foreign espionage by granting them greater power and share of itself, we can expand the support of the state here and push Hippogriffio back into the sea. Stand firm. The hippogriffs once thought that their strength would drive us into the sea. The nightmare laughs at their insolence. For now, we turn to face them with all of our might. Greater enemies have died by our hooves, and greater enemies shall fall in the future. These hippogriffs shall be driven back into the sea. And the Colossus. Though the, through the use of vacuum tubes and other electronic marbles, we can develop an electric, electronic machine that can uh, compute certain equations and ciphers for us. Our leading electronics experts predict massive leaps and bounds in processing ability and can power the newer models of the Colossus as well bolster military production. More factories mean more guns, more guns mean more soldiers. The math is quite simple, but we have to commit time to consolidate our national assets to refocus our military production. Once we pull our reserves, we'll be able to enjoy the benefit of more factories, which means more guns, etc., etc., and minor mechanization. A machine can do twice, the, do twice the work of an average pony, save for a few anomalous earth ponies among our miners. Be that as it may, by mechanizing our mines, we can extract more, dig deeper, and enjoy a much larger return on them. Um, someone the cop comes glued to glory to the nightmare. She shall, she shall save us all. Uh, so also, there's a completely different tree the Civil War does trigger, and honestly, I do find it fun to help larger countries on their big wars. And yeah, Equestrian Wars is one of the mods where I believe field hospitals are necessary, especially when you aren't communist. Someone says, a classing, uh, fitting classic Brody song is Soldiers of the Night. Project Noctul the First. Project Noctul has finally had a breakthrough. After what felt like an eternity of searching for viable candidates, we have found a volunteer from my own Silver Moon Legion, a particularly large stallion by the name of Comet Flash. Comet Flash is an impressive specimen, even foregoing scientific measure. He stands nearly a head and a half above most in the Legion, and has outperformed every other candidate in physical trials. While I found his appearance, uh, physical appearance to be pleasingly symmetrical, a hallmark of good genes, his mind was not as sharp as others were, that were considered. I'm almost embarrassed to admit I hesitated, but it only took a moment to remind myself of Project Knuckles' goal, a super soldier. Upon further review of this record, Servus former spears have reported a cruelty towards the enemy. Some have noted that he does not seem to care about others, only about the next fight. I will admit it is a shame that the Comet Flash is not a smaller stallion. He would have found the LMRD to be quite hospitable to his needs. All things considered, Comet Flash has the best chance to physically endure the chemicals that have been prepared for his treatments. His mental shortcomings are not an issue, but merely eliminate his candidacy for other projects. I'll just keep an eye on your progress personally, Mr. Flash. Of course, Colossus. I think I read this one again, so... Yeah. Uh, or maybe not. Through the use of vacuum tubes and other electronic marbles, we can develop an electronic machine that can compute certain equations and ciphers for us. Our leading electronics expert predicts massive leaps and bounds in processing ability and power with newer models of the Colossus as well. Coal liquefaction, CTL, or coal to liquid fuels, is a process in which coal is rather obviously converted into fuel. Although this method of synthesis has been around for several years, we have finally yet to fully invest in this ingenuity of the idea. By embracing this new method of accessing critical fuels, we can bolster our reserves, diversify, and specialize. Diversification is a process of allocating capital in a way that reduces exposure to any one particular asset or risk. Or while a specialization is an allocation of capital into one particular asset for the greatest reward. We'll find the balance between both our new industrial fund, dedicated allocating grants to different parts of our economy, and coconut crab ranching. The coconut crab is a large lion animal with an exoskeleton that does not use magical means for its survival. These large creatures were common in Shirup Terra and have been hunted for centuries by their meat, or for their meat, nearly to the point of extinction. By expanding our protection of the crabs and allocating many more sanctioned ranches, we can cultivate Project them Project Noctul 2. I've personally seen second stage Comet Flash's testing compared to all other ongoing projects I am optimistic. Continued injections must be administered over the next several weeks, but on the most basic level, the subject's DNA is reacting astonishingly well to the treatment. There's been no physical breakdowns, only increased muscular hypertrophy and bone density to accommodate for its increasing size. While Comet Flash once stood nearly a head taller than I, it is projected to be maybe twice my height by the time his regimen is completed. It succeeded at each athletic test and physical feat the team has placed before him. We have managed to avoid sedation by allowing plenty of rest, relaxation, and increased rations for him. He'd rather sit simply, treat him right, and get treated right. Simplicity is a characteristic that I admire in Comet. His simplicity is also constant, and the stallion is not bright before the injections and has not displayed any increased intelligence after them. Thankfully, there has been no visible mental degradation either. One of the researchers, however, came to me with a theory after we finished testing the subject today. According to her, we are witnessing mental stagnation rather than degradation. As the subject's size increases and his brain warps subtly to respond to these changes, his already lacking mental capacity is capping off. We'll observe the subject closer for the time being to see these theories hold water. I do not need a super soldier to be super smart.
The carapaced friend. Honey, do you wanted a puppy more than anything in the world? She went to temple and listened through all the moon speaker sermons like a good filly and always listened to her parents like the nightmare said to. She got good grades in school and hated the sunnies with all her guts just like she was supposed to. Then on her swarming eve, then after she'd been a good pony all year, and when she finally was going to get what she deserved, her parents gave her waddles. A giant coke and a crap. Waddles wasn't cute or fast, and when she tried to play fetch with him, she he just stared. Or she thought he just stared. She wasn't even sure where his eyes were or if he was a he. There was one thing, though, that Waddles could do that a dog could not. She'd also gotten a genuine crab saddle with him. It took more than a few weeks to get Waddles to let her try it out, but after a few bribes of spoiled sweets and extra shell scrubs, Honeydew found herself loving her new best friend. Other ponies might have dogged cats, but when it was time to play, legionnaires and sunnies, Honeydew was always picked first. Every pony in school wanted to... The mayor with the personal monster on her side. Her and Waddles led the Legion to victory every time. Even though they never lost before, but they won faster now. He wasn't a pet for long, but Waddles was her battle buddy and friend. He's so adorable. Um, as you can tell, we're trying to slowly, slowly crash through Hippogriffia and Warzena. It's taking a while though, but great market context. As we press into the underground economy, we shall enjoy the fruits of our labors. Several shipping companies from Halkland and Skyfall shall begin as loose to lose shipments in international waters along the coast of Saudi Arabia, but the shared insurance conglomerate Lunar Protections will always reimburse them handsomely. Luxuries for masses. Our economy becomes more and more efficient. Or efficient. Uh, our experts have found startling accounts of surplus and excess. We're out producing our projections for the next century, meaning that we can afford to shower our ponies with commercial goods and luxuries. Examining what went wrong. We failed to bring the eternal night and, uh, nightmare moon remains lost to us, but we cannot give up hope. We must think back to our ancestors when they first arrived on these shores. We must follow in their example and lay the groundwork for the next war, even if it must be in another thousand years. And we must keep going until we get that event to talk about that, too. And maybe welcome to the new exiles. With the failure of Operation Moonshine, we must arrange for a withdrawal of significant assets from Equestria. There's a silver lining in that officers we embedded in the, into the Equestria military can now return to us with their experience and sympathizers. Uh, we must have this too. Level 3, why not? We consider sense of total war, but so far we're doing alright. We've lost 30,000 people, but we've killed off 200,000, so... Also, the reason that, why that's happened is because most of our infantry divisions are 43 combat but with, um, with field hospitals, hydro companies, and of course our Pegasi divisions are 24 combat but with, and we are still mobilizing more, so... Um, other than that, we're doing alright. It's just a slow grind. Once we get Zamar, uh, where the enemy soldiers will be gone, but whatever. It's the most, main thing right now is to de delete enemy manpower. That's like the most important thing right now. If we possibly can. Um, yeah. So that's the most important thing. Uh, opium harvest, very cool. We could do that. Yeah, keep going, keep going, keep doing and doing and doing and doing. Logistics 2 is very good as well. That's uh, 10, 12. Uh, more entrenchment, sure, why not? A little bit of not success right now. Oh, we need success. We need a lot of success. So we want success. And we'll get success. Yeah. Oh, level four here. Well, it seems like they should be pushed in a little bit more as well, if possible. They don't look like they have a lot of stuff there, which is fine with us. Please drop their organization to the lowest level possible. Four division, that's going to be kind of hard to beat, but, you know, whatever. Four, with these guys, how thick they are, it's going to be very good. And let's get some more defense as well for us. Thank you very much. Just shredding them is just awesome. 174,000 losses, not bad. Getting more oil, because, my God, do we need a lot of fuel. Uh, here, you can probably take the capital in all honesty. You might just be able to, maybe, maybe not. If they want to reinforce their line, well, then we'll just send guys this way too. Um, yeah, overall, not bad. You four can t probably take these guys on. You can help them out here too. I doubt you can do anything here, but, you know, whatever. Zanmar, and they're gone. Which means we could risk it by trying to push in all together, maybe. Mm, we're going to incur quite a few high casualties if we do that, but... Uh, we can cut them off. Asterion. Yes, yes. Oh! An encirclement, a tasty one at that. Mosey has capitulated, nice. Mossy, Mosey, something like that. Unification of the Great Lakes, alright. Just an all over there, please, thank you very much. And we're going to go ahead and hold. A small little push to take him out. And for us now to get more entrenched, more settled in, because now we've eliminated quite a few guys. Not bad. Um, you guys go here. You guys go here. Let's see what we can do. You should be able to do that. In theory, you're going to force the attack when you do this, though. So we get to here, and then you get into there, which would be great. Nice. Because I want to go these three divisions right here. Go right there. 
Nice, there you go. And... Boom. Go in. Immediately start just blowing them up. Nice. It's only three divisions, but whatever. Yeah, no, you're going to be able to win here. There we go. There we go. That's pretty nice. They have only 59 divisions left, which is fine. Two subs have been sunk. I lost a few planes here and there, but whatever. The Moonshine After Action Report. The Legionary Council uh, has assembled to assess the military's role in the failure of Operation Moonshine, a pony. It's looking forward to the discussion of why the nearly thousand-year-old plan failed, but to avoid a conflict with no solutions before proposals to reform the military are being presented. The first proposal is from Lord Commander Palisade, a major a general error, does not see any major changes to the doctrine, but rather the introduction of new technologies into the force. The argument is that planning for Moonshine was not flawed, just as execution, therefore. The solution is to keep our modus operandi and long-term planning for advanced operations and simply improve upon our means of executing plans at a more effective rate. Next proposal is from Lady Commander Lightning Charm and Lieutenant General Bryan. They propose an extreme change in the use of support units and artillery in our doctrine, favoring overwhelming firepower and the full integration of auxiliary units to support it. Their solution is most, to most military problems is to engage the enemy with such great quantities of firepower that our foes cannot retaliate. Lieutenant General Bat Batten and Brigadier General Eclipse present the third and most radical plan of the Council. Their heated debates are famous, but their vocal and passionate commitment to a doctrine that focuses on mobility is widely seen as the only thing they agree on. They believe that by motorizing our legions and making the focus of our advance on armed units, that we can outmaneuver our adversaries and achieve decisive victories. Lady Commander Lunar Hale, as well known for her piety in the Holy Empress and advocates for a doctrine that claims favors a goddess. By amassing large waves of soldiers for coordinated assault, she believes that we can overcome any obstacle. Some counter that these plans would waste valuable re legionnaires, but she proposes supplementing the legions with redemptionary brigades. So, oh, we complete focus strategy, that's definitely a time for time plan. Well, I mean, with this one stuff, uh, we're going to destruction from afar. So, it is what it is. Um, you're going to do that, please go right ahead. Operational integrity. Ooh, more organization. Experience soldiers' losses goes down. That's good. Gone are the days when the generals commanded nearly every aspect of a battle. Instead, our commanders will now pass on their plans and intent to subordinates. Those subordinates will do the same down the chain of command. At each level, the officers will be able to pursue their own means to complete their respective objectives with disciplined initiative. Oh, psychological warfare. Ooh, this is cool. Any soldiers are susceptible to manipulation, even our own. While our propaganda will remind the legions of what they are fighting for, we shall invest heavily into our own efforts to undermine our enemy's will to fight. It's useless to resist the will of Nightmare Moon. And we are our chosen ponies. If the pamphlets do not convince them, the speaker systems will. Which would be great. Would be super, super great. I apologize if you hear anything from, um... That's does not... That's not me. So, um... Enemy support. Jolly, jolly good. Get your guys on the line, give them some time to get some planning done. And then uh, we're not going to blitz them yet, because we can't. But we'll do what we can. Start making little incursions. Oh, then air doctrine, yes, yes. The lightnings cannot stop us. Very nice. More cast. Do we still have air superiority here? Yes, we do. I'm glad we spent some time on the Air Force. Oh, goodness. If we didn't, that would have been a mistake. But we did not make a mistake too much yet. Go ahead, guys. Let's even cut them off. If we can cut these guys off, then we'll do a general push. And there we go. That's what we can do. Pop them out. I know there's not a lot of supply, and getting a Zerto is going to be super crucial, but whatever. Come on. Come on, you got this. Come on, yes. Oh, we're so close, we're so close. And there you go. Let's go in. Let's see what we can do. Everyone's gonna force the attack, or if we can. Especially this group here, it has to die. It just has to die. Over here, I'm not too worried about that, but whatever. That's a lot of divisions going to die the arrival of the Exiles. As the cargo ships began their slow approach into Ursagrads, oh, uh, massive heart, broke cold smoke could feel something gnawing at his stomach. It was not seasickness. That much was clear, rather. It was a strange mixture of apprehension, excitement, and shame. Especially the latter. It was a realization that all the efforts, all the training had been for naught, and that the chance in a millennium to fight right and old wrong had failed, or was gone. Um, he had considered more than once remaining in Equestria, but in the end, he could simply just could not. It remained there as long as, of course, he couldn't remain there as long as the tyrant of the sun reigned, and the true empress remained in chains. He knew that his parents would have understood that bet had they been still alive. They had raised him with the faith in the nightmare after all. Standing on the top deck, packed with ponies watching silently as the docks drew ever closer, the unicorn stallion wondered briefly the first exile had felt the same way 1,000 years ago, exhausted for the long travel with the burning knowledge in their minds that reminded them of their failure, and yet 
Cole Smoke caught the sight of uniformed ponies waiting for them on the docks. Flanked by moon speakers and flag bearers, a sight that strengthened his resolve. These ponies had experienced defeat for the second time in a thousand years, yet their commitment was unwavering. They were determined to carry on the struggle no matter the cost or time it would require. No matter what it takes, he muttered to himself, we will return. May the nightmare be my witness. We will. Some things never change. Awesome. Auxiliary combat stuff. Let's grab this one. That'd be really good. Nice. Beautiful. You need a general. Tank person. You. Or infantry person. Death of Nova Corfonian diplomacy. Well, oh well for them. You know what? Let's go and hold. Get everyone on the front line first, because we've suffered 63,000 casualties, and uh, can't really place them that easily. So, yeah. We need some serious aluminum. Two. Still building some civvies, still building some stuff up there, that's fine. Three, two, one, let's, vamoose. Yeah, they have losses of almost half a million already, which is insane. They're mobilizing more, but victory plan? Well, we'll see about that. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Lost 15 planes, wow. Sunk 3 subs and 4 destroyers, which is not bad either, but they do have a, still have a very impressive navy. Even more soft stack if you can. Oh, surrounded and destroyed. Beautiful. That's what we love. So when does the war end then? I mean, if they want to lose their soldiers, it's an easy way to do that. And there you go. Is there a way to peace out with them? Oh, the Tragoret Treaty. Should Hippogriffia accept this peace offer after Orchera took the she's control of all Rosanna and receive ownership of several other lands? Encircle Eris. Alright, Operation Integrity is nice. Psychological warfare, yeah. I mean, they've got nowhere to go, so. Die there, which is good. Uh, I'm gonna have you guys come back over here. This is, oh boy, look at that. We lost a crap ton of planes, but we sunk a lot of ships. That's very impressive. Hello, convoys. 16 convoys, very nice. Hmm. Labor importation plans, yes. Refinery construction speed wouldn't be bad either. Naval stuff. Carrier, less armor. That one's worth doing. Well then. Do we actually spare planes? Oh yeah, we do. Well, you guys are probably relatively okay at invading, so plan two from here to there. One, two. Oh god, no. Okay, yeah, you can. Okay, that's good. Yeah, actually, do this. Uh, don't do that one, because that means we have to go over there. Firstborn, from here. Um, to there. That's all we can really afford. You. Stone Palace. Just sinking convoys left and right, my god. That's awesome. Nice. Okay. 
here. Put some of this up too. Oh, we got a lot of ships still. Three spare planes. We got spare casts. Pretty much it though. Stuff, grab some of that because you can. This too. Save so we don't lose our navy. But if they do bring out their ships, we should be able to uh, have a way with them, in theory. Give us a couple more days before we can go, and then see what happens. Hope we do well. Oh boy. Can we go in? I'm gonna have supremacy, huh? What if we just did this? There you go. Trying to land, trying to land, trying to land, land, land. There we go. Very nice, very nice. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes. 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 You find him, you kill him. Here. You raid, you defend. Nice. Green water experts are very good as well. Connect them. And then we'll do this. Oh, I'm not going to send all these guys in the water. They're all going to probably die. Let's do it anyways. Oh god, there's a fleet. Oh god. Lost a couple ships here and there. Oh well. God, if we lose the entire fleet, that's okay. As long as we win, that's all I care about. Radio advertisement, Crab Ranch. We are first crab, crab the Radiant Crustacean Connection are happy to announce our first annual celebration in honor of Nightmare Moon. While ranches across the ships are known for the crazy prices and quality products, have you ever thought of getting your own youngsters a new aqua instance of their own? Our new batch of mini coconut crabs have been bred to be 100% docile around equines of all types, with almost no crab raised related fatalities this year. Uh, now isn't the time to be shellfish and deny your favorite filly the friend of their dreams. In a pinch, other ranchers got your finances in hot water. Our customers are the most imp important part of our family will never treat you like a prom like some other ranches. We promise not to put you through shell and feeling crabby afterwards. <laughs> The first 200 customers to pick up their new fr best friend will receive a year's worth of our signature crab chow and a military grade leash so you can take your new best buddy wherever you want to go. This isn't a deal to miss filings and gentle colts. You've only got a few days before you have to wait another whole year to get a chance at it. It's simple but honest work. Oh my god. Psychological warfare is good. Chemical department. Ooh. Gas attack. Ooh, I like gassing people. Artillery, though, this is really important. Concentrate to fire. The, harsh, the harder the fighting, the longer the war, the more legions lean on its gunners. Artillery is the king of the battle, fit for a holy empress. We must ensure that the tools of our gunners are reliable as they are on the field of battle. Our moon speakers shall bless their shells, and our ordnance shall rain the nightmare's righteous fury from them. How many more divisions do they have? 23 to 38. How much more manpower do they have? We've got plenty of manpower. Oh, we got plenty of equipment, too. Kind of insane. All right, and um, you know what? Do this one too. That's really important and really good to get to 20, 10, 13. Construction speed. Project Noctil Third. Against the warning of the TMI granted comments request that continues the re regime of injections. The th research team's theory about the cognitive decay of Comet Wave were unfortunately correct. I am loath to admit failure, though. The Council desired a super soldier, not a super officer. Although it is stagnated mentally, Comet's existing faith in our gods and our causes remains steadfast. While it not be performing complex algebra soon, Comet survived all injections and testing, some to be a grotesque monster, but I merely observed the pinnacle of equine form. He stands two heads over me now, eye level with a false god Celestia. He has killed two sparring partners and has severely wounded six more before the council overruled my continued desire for further testing. Comet Flash may not be a general, but he's expected what he, he is what we wanted. He has a calculated and detached and powerful style, and his mind is weak, but despite this, he is strong. I advise against giving him any true command, but I am granting him a special status as an elite agent of the LMRD. Special ordinance and armor will be crafted for him, and Cherub Terra will bear witness to the first super soldier. Time to die, sonnies! Living weapon, what the heck? Oh god. Leader experience gain minus 100%. A lot more attacks. Focus energy goes way down. Division attack plus 50% attack. Jesus Christ. Level, oh yeah, level 10. My god. We should do, be able to do okay this year. Of course, out of command power, but I don't think there's anything they can really do to stop us here. If we go here, we can cut all these other divisions off. Um, 
Ball of Nine Earths. The mountain bows to the storm, my friends. We have them. I didn't actually think we'd be able to do this. Holy crap. Oh, now get it done? Oh, man, come on. It's got help putting down resistance and such. Well, I think we've won this war, to be honest. TBH is... I guess my girlfriend would say. Huh. Well, we got him. Shunikes. But you're up here in Commonwealth. The North Africa War is over. Blood and sweat have been shed in quantities never seen before as modern armies clash against each other in a veritable struggle between titans. In the end, however, our enemies simply cannot face their iron discipline and unshakable faith to the nightmare. All those who dared oppose us now lay broken. Once their, their once proud people will now count in submission. Well, most of them. All across the newly established Europe, here in Commonwealth, many armed groups have risen against us. Our forces, overstretched and exhausted after a long campaign, must now deal with constant attacks and harassment by local militias and former enemy patrols or personnel, determined to carry out the struggle to the bitter end. Even worse, their defiance is inspiring even more of those within our newly conquered territories to rise against us in open rebellion. Such defiance cannot be allowed to stand any longer. Our force must move quickly if the Commonwealth is to survive the new struggle. True war has just begun. Native resistance overwhelming. Oh, Jesus Christ, that's not good. Oh. Tobuk is no longer a core? Are you kidding me? Bro. Bruh. Uh, we're going to keep those guys there, and we're going to keep you probably right up here, too. Uh, just in case you guys just come back down here and, like, relax, because it's been, it's been a pretty intense war. I'll be honest. Like, we lost ships. We did really well, though, which I'm very proud of these guys. Awesome. We lost a couple subs, too, but I don't want to click on this. I really don't. Um, just make more convoys for now, too. Uh, initial mechanized, that's fine, whatever. We might actually use mechanized in the end. We'll see. Form the Hippogriff and govern it. Oh, we might do that. Oh, shnikes. Industrialize this group. So, are you seriously not cored anymore? Oh my god, you are not. Why? Why do you paint us so? Comet flash. Concentrated fire. Well, and we'll do what we can down here, but... The cheer up Terran Commonwealth, through the victor of the spoils, we have achieved our goals, our second great conquest has crushed the armies of our enemies. No organized military, no singular nation that we opposed, remains standing to fight us. We shall declare our Commonwealth of Nation under the cheer up Terran banner, for together we shall achieve the ultimate victory in the generations to come. Ooh, get anti-tank. Oh, that's easy to get. The Stanchion. The Stanchion is a modern anti-tank route that gives its user the power of an anti-tank gun and the power of their hooves. Early trials are promising, with a lot of fire demonstrations coming in in a matter of months. The ammo with the tank weapon uses can be altered as well as depending on the range, target, or environment. All around a promising unique weapon for our legion's arsenals. Integration woes. Different fire different event depending on if the moderates or the highlanders have 50% or more popu party popularity. Fresh blood. Integration debate has to be talked about first. Well, we have to go this one first. Our success is coming to less obvious cost. While we have won the war and are dealing with the surgeons, it's clear now that we face another issue entirely. What to do with the civilians in a new territory? Some voices demand immediate enslavement. Others suggest this new influx is an opportunity for change. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we'll figure out what we're going to do with a new Cheer Up Terran Commonwealth. Thanks for watching. Have a tremendous, tremendous, tremendous rest of your day.